Hi, everybody. Welcome. Everybody's still awake. I hope you've had some coffee. I've had a bit, um, which is why I have the, um, the lav mic so I can walk around a bit and work some of that off. Um, things are running a little bit slow this afternoon, so um, while they have been gracious enough to give me my full 20 minutes, I, I'm going to talk kind of fast um, to see if we can catch up some of that time. But that said, if you guys want to um, ask questions or participate, contribute to the discussion, I encourage you to do so. Um, so this is my a lot of words about my background. I've been around 20-ish years. I know it's amazing. I started when I was five. Uh, I've been on every side of the table. I've been in-house. I've been a consultant a couple different times, but on the technology side. Now I'm a DTI under an interesting uh, banner of strategy and innovation, which is really where I, I'm helping DTI look at our service offerings in the context of today um, and how we can be uh, uncovering and delivering new value to our customers. So. Without further ado, we're going to get into the topic here. Uh, I don't know if you guys have all heard, but hybrid is the new black when you talk about cloud, right? I see a few heads nodding because cloud is, when you say cloud, it's not one cloud, or is it? Some people think it is, but in fact, it's all kinds of different clouds. Gartner, back in 2013, said that by the end of 2017, nearly half of large enterprises will have hybrid cloud deployments. Hmm, pretty close. <laughs> I got a thumbs up. Um, so I, uh, I found this state of the cloud report. Um, RightScale is actually, uh, there it is, RightScale is, is actually a cloud, a cloud management platform. Um, so when you start thinking about hybrid cloud deployments, it's actually where you're using a mix of, of different types of um, cloud services as well as potentially on-prem, and you're gonna need some layer in the middle to manage that. So that's what that company does. And they put out a, a study every year about what are people doing around cloud, how are they deploying, where are they deploying, what are they deploying it to? Um, and they've said that in fact, we're ahead of Gartner's prediction, or at least the folks that they talked to, 82% of enterprises in their latest study, in fact, are uh, living in a hybrid world. To this bottom point, um, is anybody in here not using some sort of cloud services in your organization? Everybody is. That's right. That's right. So it's, it's really not a question of if. It's the same, same thing about uh, who in here has not been hacked, because you already have. You just may not know yet. Uh, so it's really not a question of if. if it's really um, when and, and really the how, right? So that's the question we're going to ask today. How do you decide what kind of cloud deployment makes the most sense for your organization? Well, let's get to it. So this is the definition, my definition of what hybrid is. It's a mix of on-prem infrastructure, public cloud, public multi-tenant cloud, private hosted cloud, and private internal cloud, which is basically a virtualized on-prem infrastructure. So why do we have hybrid? Because, you know, much like, like the, the mittens you buy for winter, one size does not fit all. Because I can guarantee you, I buy those one size fit all mittens and they fit my kids and me but they wouldn't fit Shaquille O'Neal. So it doesn't fit everybody, but that's because not all data is the same, right? Every organization's got stuff that uh, is super, super secret or super, super important, whether it's uh, social security numbers uh, in a transactional database because you do online retail, um, maybe it's you're a pharmaceutical and you've got uh, proprietary drug recipes, super, super secret stuff. Maybe you also have stuff that you want to keep internal to your internal teams, but then there's other things that you actually need uh, your customers or your partners to collaborate on. There are things you're going to need to produce to external authorities. There are th the things that uh, keep your business humming, like your email systems. Then there's also data in your, in your enterprise that's just the residue of business, right? Some of those things you have a, an obligation to keep, sometimes for a short period of time, sometimes for a long period of time. So the trick with cloud is deciding what's the right mix for me, right? So a hybrid, a hybrid environment is going to be some mix of public, private, and on-prem, but how do, you, how do you decide? The first questions you need to be asking yourself are, who the heck am I? What does my company do? What industry are we in? Who are our customers? Where does data come from? Where does it go? Who's using it? What obligations do I have? How, in fact, do I engage with my customers in the marketplace? Does anybody here know what their company's mission statement is? A few. 
If you don't, I highly recommend you go find out because when you start asking these questions, which it seems kind of disconnected, right? I'm gonna decide which, which stuff's gonna go in the cloud and what's not. You need to kind of really understand what your business is and what your goals are, what your obligations are in the marketplace to understand and balance some of the risks that you're gonna face by choosing one avenue or another. I love this picture. <laughs> Anybody here a cat person? I am. <laughs> Um, so once you've decided for yourself, okay, this is the business that I'm in. Uh, these are my kinds of customers. Maybe I'm doing business with banks, or maybe I'm doing business with consumers, or maybe I'm doing business with um, other businesses. I'm, I'm B2B. Um, then you can start to look at your specific data flows. Because when it comes down to it, choosing the right mix of deployment op options is really all about the data that's going to be in it, right? We, we decided that cloud's not one big cloud. So, and not all data is the same. So we've got to actually chop up data into logical chunks to decide, should I deploy it here? Should I deploy it there? What are the risks? What are the trade-offs? So specifically, which data are we talking about? Is this my website? Is this my um, transactional database where I'm doing business and, and capturing um, maybe credit card numbers or things like that? Maybe this is just kind of a, a, a file share kind of environment, collaborative, um, work in process environment, what is, what is the data itself specifically? Who needs it and how do they need to get to it? And how often do they need to get, need to, get to it? How quickly do they need to get to it? These are all questions we need to be asking because there's going to be an effect um, based on the, the deployment method that you choose. What performance requirements do you have? Uptime, downtime? Is that in your control if you're, if you're going out to a hosted environment, a, a hosted cloud environment? How much of that performance are you willing to give up? Security, what security requirements do you have? Is it, again, social security number, a private drug recipe, or is it public information that's already out on your website? What kind of compliance requirements exist with the data that, that you're sending out, potentially sending out to the cloud? And do I get sued a lot over the data that's gonna be potentially out in the cloud? And if I am sued a lot, how quickly do I need to get to it? Do I have confidence that I'll be able to get to it? And then the last one is really important, I found, and cultural challenges, right? So how many of you in here um, have a, a web deployed ECM environment? Right, so for those who are used to of a more enterprise behind the firewall implementation, you've got more control over that and, and folks are used to the, how, how they interact with that. But sometimes the cloud deployment can look different. There can be pushback on, uh, wanting to go to go there to use it and and concerns about that type of data going into the cloud who's got it can we control it what's the security around it performance around it so this is something that um, when I was making these kinds of decisions this was the first question that I asked and to me this is kind of the foundational um, decision point what kind what kind of data is it is it super sensitive and what's the workload look like because you know what what the the primary potential of cloud is, is scale and accessibility. So <clears throat> this top one, if it's highly sensitive stuff, I probably want to keep it really close. But I have an option to have it on-prem where I can control it all, or I can send it up into a private cloud where I am paying to control it all. Low sensitiv sensitivity stuff, public information, like your website, why not put that on a public cloud? It's perfect. You're not worried about your trade secrets getting out because you're not putting them on your website, I hope. Anybody doing that? No. Variable workloads. So you think about retail. Retail is a great example, right? There are peaks and valleys. You're going to have a white sale for Memorial Day. You're going to have the Christmas rush, Black Friday, um, where you, cloud, actually the built-in scalability of cloud is really, really valuable. But then you have other processes like your accounting department or um, other more common uh, business functions that are static. You're, the workload is static. You know what capacity you need. There aren't big spikes. So those are perfect for on-prem. Questions? Yes? No. No questions. All right. So let's start to look at this. <coughs> Excuse me. So obviously, uh, sensitivity and workload are not the only things that you want to consider. Obviously, there are costs involved. And these little graphs I made up 
uh, your mileage will vary. <laughs> um, but these are some other data points that you should be considering, right? Accessibility, who needs to get to it? How are they gonna be willing to get to it? Um, you know, just because you put something up in the cloud and, and it's, you can get to it through an internet connection, do people reasonably have access to an internet connection? Is that internet connection stable? Is it a critical work process where if they don't have access to the internet, they're not gonna be able to get their work done and that will have some you know, substantive impact on the business? What about security? What kind of security, how much security? Is a big wall big enough? Do we need to have some sort of information rights management on it so we can know proactively what people are doing and what people are trying to access information, what they're doing with it? Cost, simple one, but not a simple equation. And we'll get into the, the cloud versions of this in a second. Um, when we talk about on-prem, it's really expensive. You have to buy the hardware, you've gotta buy the software, and you have to have the people to maintain all of those things over time. Scale, again, when we talk about workloads, um, scalability becomes one of the primary reasons to go to cloud, right? We're all drowning in information. Anybody here not? Anybody solved that problem yet? Nobody, okay. <laughs> That's good, that's why we're all here, right? At least in part. So um, scalability is, is one of the, the great promises of cloud and, um, and I, I think it's true. Um, I think for all of the people who came out of the records management discipline in the room, we'd say, hmm, maybe we don't need all that information, but in fact, what I found is that organizations haven't yet figured out how to clean all that stuff up. Um, and in reality, the, the pressures of day-to-day -day business are saying we don't have time to figure that out we need to find some place where we can put all of this stuff. Um, and in fact, that we can, um, it can grow and scale with us over time. And the last one's performance. Um, you know, how fast do you need to be able to get to it? Who needs to be able to get to it? How do they get to it? Um, how much uptime, how much downtime? What kind of downtime can you control that through SLAs? Um, obviously on-prem, those are all things you can control. The cost is super high, performance is pretty high because that's within your control. It's behind your firewall, you've got the stacks in your, in your server room, um, even security, I kind of gave it a low grade on-prem, but that was in comparison to what you potentially can get outside. Has anybody here in your organizations heard the argument, no, we cannot possibly send it to the cloud because it's not secure? Right, I'm telling you, uh, more often than not, the security level that you're gonna get with the cloud service, depending on the cloud service, uh, is gonna be more than you can actually afford. That cost will go right off the scale um, if you really need to invest at the level that uh, an outsourced provider will. Um, they need to do it, right? You've got a, um, you have an obligation to start to understand what, what, what their investments are. Um, and what kinds of promises they can make to you, but in reality to today invest in the level of security in a data center that an external um, hosting provider would, would provide is gonna be cost prohibitive. Obviously from an accessibility standpoint, on-prem is great when you're all in one place. I worked from home for seven years, right? I mean, it's, if I have to go into an office to get access to, um, to our file shares or any of our enterprise applications, that's gonna be really difficult. So for my company, having cloud services available to us for all the, the stuff that I need to get to becomes really important. It's a decision factor for us. All right, so hosted private clouds, you see it's kind of all at the top. It's expensive. It's as expensive as it's gonna be for on-prem, but you've got those benefits of accessibility, scalability. Again, those are the two big ones, um, particularly when you're looking at variable workloads in terms of scale. Um, if you are a retail environment that's e-commerce, having the ability to have to host those spikes and not have to like pay for all the infrastructure that you would need to host that internally becomes really valuable. Another thing about cloud is the potential to have understandable costs but that comes down to a specific, a specific um, agreement that you're gonna make with your cloud provider. But it does kind of um, equalize it. I, I don't know if, it, has anybody here ever gone through the exercise to try and determine uh, how much you actually pay for the disk that you have behind your firewall? It's a really complicated equation. Really complicated. And even if you figure out what your incremental cost is for the disk, understanding how you buy it becomes the next question, because just because you pay this amount and say, well, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete 10 terabytes of rot 
off my uh, disk, that doesn't mean you stop paying for it. But in the cloud, it might, depending on the, the arrangement that you set up with your cloud provider. So this one's really important. Performance can take a hit. Again, I mean, you're, you're outsourcing your infrastructure, at least part of it, to somebody else. So you are going to be beholden to what their, their commitments are around uptime and downtime. So going into these types of, of agreements, it's important to understand uh, when you'll not have access to your data, why you'll not have access to it, and in fact, if you need to have access to it in an emergency, what procedures may exist to allow you to do it. All right, so for those who have um, cloud-deployed ECM, um, this is usually what you have, um, where it's a public cloud, but it's multi-tenanted. Um, basically, they kind of carve out a space for you, but you're still all in one big pot. Interesting, you know, it, from a cost perspective, it's, it's pretty um, uh, more manageable from a cost perspective, right? Because they don't have to provide a completely siloed, walled off, uh, unique infrastructure for you as one customer. They can provide all of the underlying infrastructure, infrastructure and then <coughs> put you all in different units. Um, but there's some potential risk there. Right? If you're all in one big pot together, what's the potential of, of those, those lines leaking or breaking down um, and some of your information being exposed to people that aren't within your organization? It certainly risks questions you need to ask of your, of your cloud provider to say, you know, help me understand what, what, um, what leaks you've had, if you've had any, um, how, what your escalation process is, what your monitoring process is to understand um, how you can control and understand those risks. Um, any type of cloud, uh, real cloud, external hosted cloud, it's going to be great for uh, environments where you have folks working all over the place. Is anybody here, or is your whole company all in one office? Anybody? Does anybody here not allow people to work from home on occasion? Does anybody here ever invite external parties to collaborate on information with you? That's a big one, right? So that's a big reason why I'm seeing an, a, a further adoption of cloud services is um, creating things like portals, customer portals, where your customers can be invited in um, to collaborate on whatever you're working on with them. Law firms do it a lot with their clients. Could you do that on a private hosted cloud? Sure. You know, the virtualized environment that you're hosting? Sure. Um, but depending on the, again, the scale and the demand, and the workflow, are you going to have a bunch of spikes? Is it something that you really want to pay? In an on-prem scenario, you're going to have to pay for the top of the spike. And you're going to then eat that cost when the spikes don't exist. Right? So from a, a cloud perspective, you're, not, you're, you're only paying for the spikes when you need them. Another important point on this one is um, important but not mission critical information. Right? There's, there's the potential here for, for this type of cloud service to present some risk. So again, thinking about which data am I sending out to the cloud? Uh, is it reasonable for me to expect from a risk management perspective, from a risk tolerance perspective, that if something bad happened um, or if we weren't able to access the data at the exact time that we wanted to access it, is that, the, is that a bet the business type of scenario? And so then there's the public cloud, and this is the consumer cloud that most of us use, right? Or I don't, do, do any of us have an expectation of privacy anymore? No, we shouldn't. Um, public cloud or, you know, all the things that we use as consumers, the, um, what is Apple, Apple's cloud service, what do they call that? Rich, what do they call that? iCloud, iCloud thank you. Um, you know, I got all my photos are up there and all my, uh, all my stuff's up there, but I really don't have an expectation that anything up there is private because it's not something you're spending a ton of money on uh, to keep it uber secure. I'm not saying it's not secure, and it may still be more secure than your on-premises data center, uh, but there is an expectation that there's, they're not spending as much money on these types of services as they would on something where they've specifically agreed um, and are charging a fee for. Really great for systems of engagement. This is really where the public cloud, I, I see there's a real opportunity for organizations to start to adopt this more. Um, obviously, things like Office 365, um, other sorts of 
mission critical or, or important to business systems going into private or, or public multi-tenant, but websites, why not? use AWS or Azure? Why not use something that's really cost effective, that can still give you the accessibility, can still give you the scale promise of the cloud, but you aren't paying an exorbitant amount of money to protect stuff that's already in the public domain? I'm going really fast. Any questions, any comments? Everybody is asleep, awake, okay. All right, well, look, I have gone through this super fast, but I want to leave us with this, because this, to me, when I stay awake at night, which I was last night, I could not sleep in that hotel, um, I was actually thinking about this. So this quote is great. It's from the former CEO of Sun Microsystems. He says, we believe we're moving out of the ice age, the iron age, the industrial age, in fact, the information age, because I still talk about that. <laughs> um, but now we're moving into the participation age. We don't just get on the net, but we actually do stuff. And we have an expectation that we're gonna be able to do stuff. So when we start to think about uh, cloud services, we, we need to move beyond the kind of the traditional thought process around, do we go to the cloud or not? You're gonna. Um, the question is, what are, how are we gonna leverage those, those, um, those services on behalf of ourselves and our clients? And what opportunities are there to optimize the cost of that um, that triangle, right, the constraint triangle, we've got cost and we've got risk and um, it, whatever the other third one is for your company. Um, but the expectation has been set that uh, we're moving mobile first, cloud first. Um, and so it, it's incumbent upon all of us in this, in this room to really understand um, from, a, from a governance perspective, what does all of this mean and how can we be helping our organizations uh, sort it out? Right? If, if we're not the ones making decisions on uh, where something is going to go, how can we at least be part of the discussion? Anybody in here make those decisions for your organization? One person. Um, what's your name? Pat. Um, Pat, I, I encourage you to share with the rest of the room some of the things that you're seeing when you're trying to make these decisions. Um, you know, sometimes we don't have access to those folks who are ultimately making the decision, but here's a guy right here in the room who can talk to us about it. A lot of us are just influencers, right? And we sometimes think about the more traditional records management aspects of you know, the life cycle decisions. Um, how long do I need to keep this? And, uh, you know, when the retention clock ends, do I have the ability to get rid of it? Valid questions that you should be asking. But in reality, it's not, it's not the first thing that the folks who make the decisions are asking, and it's not the last thing that they ask when they make the decision. There are so many other components to um, how you, what you select in terms of a cloud service and why you select it that are beyond just a, a life cycle question. Um, so getting to understand some of these other things and um, the other aspects that your, your IT departments are looking at enables you to have a, a more in-depth conversation with them and advise the governance process at the beginning rather than trying to deal with it at the end. So with that, that's what I got for you guys.